Hey, it's Teresa. I hope you're doing well today. Welcome back to my channel. Sorry I've been gone so long. We had, my husband had an accident, broke his collarbone, and he had to have surgery, and then I've been so sick. Uh, I've, this is my second round of antibiotics, but today I'm feeling a little bit better, So, and it's New Year's Day today, so I felt like cooking, and since it's still the holiday, I want to make another dessert. I'm going to make a red velvet sheet cake. I haven't decided if I'm going to make a German chocolate icing or the, a white chocolate cream cheese icing. Anyway, I've really missed you guys. I'm so sorry it took so long to make a video. I've been really nervous to make a video. Uh, I don't know why, but I get nervous. I'm trying to overcome that. But Ella misses you. We all miss you. I miss cooking. So I've been cooking all day today. It feels great. Um, I'll show you what I cooked. But today, I'm just going to share a dessert with you. It's I bought this magazine. And it's 13 by 9 cakes. And I, I just love it. And uh, I did an apple cake out of that magazine. And I did a video on it. And that cake... Is so good. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for uh, staying by me, watching my videos, and the support. I appreciate you all so much. And uh, this is so much fun. If I talk too much, just tell me and let me know. But uh, anyway, I'm excited. So let's get baking. Here's some of my ingredients. I, I measured some out in advance because I like to do that. And I'll, I'm going to show you that it calls for bittersweet chocolate. But since it's German chocolate, I had this and I needed to use it. So I'm using that and I melted it in the microwave. Like, you know, like every 30 seconds you stir it and then you melt it again. It only took like about, about 50 seconds to melt it completely. So that's that. And uh, I'm gonna read the recipe as I go and I'll, I'll list it down below in case I miss something. But uh, this is two cups of all purpose flour. This is three tablespoons of cocoa powder. So we're gonna put that, well, I like to mix the dry ingredients first. And I need a half teaspoon of salt. I think one of my butters is salted, but I am using a one cup of real butter. But I'm gonna go ahead and add the half teaspoon. And we need a half teaspoon of baking soda. And I took out the baking powder, but I don't need any baking powder today. So baking soda. And uh, put that out of the way. Put the salt away. And then we'll just mix this up so it'll be ready to mix when it's time. And I haven't measured. I have to open my, crack the eggs. That's what I wanted to say, crack the egg. I like to mix my dry ingredients really, really well. You wanna mix that baking soda and salt. And then I'm gonna do, use my mixer. So we'll move to the mixer next. And I also have a one and one fourth cups of buttermilk and I left my buttermilk out a little while to get it room temperature. Also my eggs, also my butter. You wanna get have your ingredients at room temperature. And I'm also using a 13 by nine. Let me show you. I've been, I have a lot of 13 by nine glass pans. I find that when I bake a cake, I like this metal pan. And I sprayed it with the cooking spray with the flour in it. And I haven't decided uh, what type of icing I'm gonna do yet? So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything yet because it might be a German chocolate one or it might be a white chocolate cream cheese. We'll see. So let me move the camera. We'll get out the mixer. We're gonna beat that butter and sugar until it's light and fluffy. You can see this well. I, I try to put a light behind here so I can show you guys better. But this is two sticks of real butter at room temperature, and this is actually uh, two different brands. Uh, Land of Lakes is my favorite brand. But I try to Tillamook, and it really stuck to the paper. But it is good butter. They're both good. I would suggest a good butter. So we're gonna, that's one and three-fourths cup of white sugar, granulated sugar. I'm gonna mix this, my mixer's pretty loud. So I'm gonna mix this, and I'll show you when when I get it light. I'm gonna add eggs. You should add them one at a time. See how light and fluffy this is? You can make it as fluffy as you want, but that's fluffy enough for me. And we're supposed to add four eggs one at a time, but this is how we cracked them. So we're just gonna pour a little bit in at a time. I'm gonna turn the mixer on. Sorry about the noise. Let me see, I hope you can, let me fix that. There, okay. Yeah, you wanna make it light and fluffy. It, it's really important for the cake. Let me see if I can do this. I should have poured this in a measuring cup. Okay, that looks like about one or two. You can turn it up. You want to beat it in really well and then pour in a little bit more. Just 
for the rest. Uh, I like a cakes with like three or four eggs in. I don't know why. Man, I, I like the texture of the cake. I'm gonna beat this for a minute and uh, be right back. Sides of the bowl, you have this. I don't have the uh, the one with the edge on it for this mixer. I have it for another mixer. I used to use a five quart mixer, and it just it's perfect for cakes and stuff. But it's it's not that good for bread. Not that I've been making a lot of bread lately, but I will be soon. I I want to do a new video on rolls. I have a new recipe. Okay, that looks good. And now I'm gonna add. Uh, I'm going to add, it doesn't call for this. I really like this in certain cakes. I only use it in certain recipes. Uh, and I, you know, I learned this from Phyllis Stokes, actually. I better get, let me get my spoon so I can measure this. It just adds a, a richness, a good flavor. Let me find my teaspoon. I'm so sorry I put it up. I'm going to add one teaspoon of this imitation butter. It just adds another Buddy flavor, buddy, a butter flavor. <laughs> and then we're gonna add vanilla. You could put vanilla extract. I have vanilla bean paste, vanilla extract, and I have some vanilla that I made a little, a long time, a little while ago. It's in this little bottle. This is my favorite, or the Nielsen Massey. Uh, but I decided that this is so expensive. I'm going to start, I'm gonna use one teaspoon of this. I'm just gonna pour it in. I'm gonna use this only, and I'm gonna contradict myself because I'm using this today and you won't be able to see the vanilla beans. So in cakes, you could use the vanilla extract if it's a dark cake. In your frostings, like a cream cheese frosting, I would use the, the vanilla bean paste because you wanna see the little seeds in it. Um, but vanilla bean paste is my absolute favorite. And I don't bake as often as I used to, so I kinda, I don't spend as much money as I used to either. So let's mix, mix this in. You probably can't tell on the camera, but you, I can see the little flecks of the vanilla. And I'm going to be using buttermilk, whole buttermilk. I'm sure you could use low fat. It calls for whole buttermilk. I had to add just a little bit of milk to mine. So, <clears throat> we're going to add the chocolate last. This is, I'm, gonna, I'm in a little corner. Please forgive me. It's a little tight right here. I'm going to add the flour mixture alternately with the butter. I'm sorry, not the butter, buttermilk. So let's add a little flour. I'm sure y'all know how to do this alternately. You just, and they say in with the flour. I, sometimes I just, I just end with whatever I feel like sometimes. And I like to pour a little bit of each. See my buttermilk's nice and thick. I just love buttermilk. I don't drink it though, but I should. <laughs> so I'm gonna do this. And then when I when I come back, we'll add the beautiful let's chocolate. Add, let's add the chocolate. I'm trying to get all of it out. But um, you could use bittersweet chocolate for this recipe as well as German chocolate. Wh whatever your favorite is. I don't know if I'd use a like a milk chocolate. Unless you want it really sweet, you could. And uh, this is kind of hard to get out. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, you can just see my arm. I always used to make German chocolate. My mom used to make German chocolate cake every holiday. My aunt made it this year, and uh, I really didn't get to try it. So I was kind of craving it. And I've never made a red velvet cake either on my channel, which I love red velvet cake. But I thought this would be a good kind of like combination. Let's see if I can scrape this off like you. This is going to make it really chocolatey oh and it's four ounces okay let's mix this it's just the right amount of the light chocolate i like that color and i like the flavor all right this sounds good i'll mix the rest of my spatula and next we'll pour it in the oh i've got to add the red the red food color i'm sorry I'll use this. i bought this a while back it's red velvet bakery emulsion and it's by the same company that makes the vanilla extract I like. I, I bought this a while back at Walmart, but you want to shake it. 
And for this amount of batter, you want to use two tablespoons. So let's see. I think it's supposed to add more flavor. I don't know. It's just some kind of specialty product. Let's try it. I'm going to add two tablespoons for this, this amount of batter. It's pretty thick. And it should add enough red color. I actually need to use this because uh, it's fairly old. You could also use one, one ounce of the bottle liquid red coloring, food coloring for this as well. I'm gonna put this in the sink. Here, oh, this is dangerous. Okay, let's mix this into what color it is. So you can see. You don't wanna go too fast and get that red on, red on you. Oh, that's pretty. Not about Dana, turn on her. All right, that looks good to me. Okay, let me get my pan and we'll start scraping the pan and get it baked. It's a lot of batter, so you could also put this in two or I think two. If it's 13 by nine, you can use two nine round it pans. You have to search with the spatula. My color works pretty good, but for something like this, you kind of have to stir it again with the spatula really well. Or you end up with streaks. It's a pretty thick batter. You know, most chocolate cakes are like uh, really liquidy. I find this one's different. I'm trying to get from the bottom. Let's dump it in. I like 13 by nines. I like better than layer cakes. I like the way they you can cut them. You don't have to stack them and then put the frosting in between and find. I'd like to just cover this one. Can they see Ella? Mm -hmm. and Ella's with me. She's helping me clean. I'm so grateful. Ella's been a bad kid. No, I'm joking. She's been really good. We've been having a, a good good time at home. I've been busy, but oh, I spilled it on my counter. I gotta tell y'all every time I make a mistake like that, because it drives me nuts. I mean, they can't see it. I know, but I can see it. You wanna spread this out as best you can, and you're gonna get this off with your hands. It's kinda messy. But you want it even. It says it bakes out. Huh. It's fluffy from beating, creaming your butter and sugar. You can just bang it on the counter too. All right. Um, this says 25 to 30 minutes. I'm not using convection today. I'm going to use just regular oven. So I'll tell you how long it bakes. And it's loud. <laughs> I just wanted to show you. That's how you want to level it. Okay. okay cake's Thank baking. You. I just wanted to show you guys what I cooked today. I wasn't gonna do the traditional thing, and then I said, no, I couldn't, because my mom always did it, so I did it. I wanted to show you this. My brother bought me this pot last year, and he got me this pot this year. I could not believe it. It is beautiful. I'm, I'm gonna be doing a lot of videos with this pot. I mean, I, I don't know where to put it, though. It's my, my kitchen's quite small, but I'll find a place. I have to get rid of stuff, but I cooked the cabbage in it today. I put a little bit of the Jimmy Dean sausage, like a hot pack, half of it, and then I put just a little bit of Cajun sauce and I chopped it up really fine. There's a little bit of turnips in here. I like it just like this. You could brown it more. I wanted it a little juicy today. So I wanted to show you that. And then this is our traditional, let me move the camera. Oh, like, oh. So I'm out of practice, guys, so be bear with me. Uh, black eyed teas and I always put Cajun sausage in it. And uh, we eat it with rice or cornbread. But I think I'm gonna bake a chicken thigh. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is take the cabbage out of this pot and I'm gonna bake it in here, I think, just to test it out. Anyway, I just wanted to show y'all my pot and what you'll see in some videos. Hopefully some delicious recipes. I'm excited and uh, when I get well, hopefully I'll get back on track. Uh, like I said, I apologize for being gone so long. And I think I'm gonna change my name too because I cook other things besides Southern food. So if y'all have any ideas, shoot them at me because I'm not very creative and uh, I really, I, it's Teresa's Southern Home Cooking. It was Teresa's Stay at Home Life. Neither one of them really matched me, but we're working on it. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I hope you have a happy new year. I hope I can post this today. If I can't, it's just, it'll just be a day late, but that's okay. Next, we're gonna have to make the frosting. I decided on the coconut frosting, so we're gonna have to cook so that. Here's the cake. I have to put it on top over here. This is the only place I have room. But it took like 45 minutes. It took way longer than the magazine said. 
and I almost overcooked it, but I, I kept testing out the toothpick and there's just a tiny bit of crumbs coming out. I like a little bit more crumbs coming out on my toothpick, but if you touch it and it springs back, it's cooked and it's coming around, coming apart from the edges and that means it's cooked. So now we're gonna let this cool and then we're gonna make the frosting. So I have all my ingredients ready. We just need to start the them. frosting. I decided to make the, I don't know, I call it the German chocolate one. But I'm, I'm going to use the one that comes off of this box. This is the closest to my mother's. I have my mother's recipe, but the instructions aren't very good. So I'm going to turn this on to medium. And you want to start with, I have to keep reading the recipe. I apologize. And I have to wear reading glasses now. This is going to take about 20 minutes, it says. And it's supposed to make about four and a half cups. So we need four egg yolks, one can this of evaporated milk. And four egg yolks. I'm going to mix that in. Sorry about my sniveling. I forgot to apologize about, apologize about that earlier. But I'm still getting over whatever I have. And I have one and a half cups of sugar. It's going to be so good. I've been craving this stuff. I don't bake that much anymore. Uh, but I, when I first started cooking, baking was my passion. And then I just kind of switch my attention to just cooking savory recipes, you know, on the stove or in the oven. But I still like baking. It's just, you have to have a lot of patience, I guess. Oh, I'm just making a mess. I'm using the silicone so it won't make a bunch of noise. But you want to mix this really well. You want to take your time or your curve of the eggs. Sometimes people do this over a double boiler, but this recipe says do it in a large saucepan. So I also need to add three fourths cup of butter. Here's my butter and I kind of cubed it up. This is the Tillamook Extra Creamy Butter. I tried that butter. I like, I like Land Lakes. I think it's the best, but this one's good. So we're gonna add this. You know, it doesn't call for a pinch of salt, but I added salted butter, so that's my pinch of salt. You always wanna add a pinch of salt, in my opinion. So I'm gonna stir this up. We're gonna add the coconut pecan after this. Look how little these letters or words are. It says to mix the vanilla in, but I don't mix the vanilla in until after I turn the heat off. So I'm gonna bring this up to medium heat, it says. I'm gonna keep stirring this and I'll check in with you guys, but you have to stir it constantly. I'll probably switch to a spatula. I just want to mix my egg yolks in really well. And uh, it says about 12 minutes, but let me tell you, the, that cake, the instructions in that magazine said 20 to 25 minutes. It took way longer than that. And, uh, anyway, I'm going to turn it to medium. So I will be back. I'm going to use my vanilla bean paste after it's cooked. You just want it thickened and a little bit golden brown. I had to chop these because I only had pecan halves. I bought a bunch for Christmas to make pecan pralines. I haven't made them yet, but I'll make them. But if you put them in the freezer, nuts last for a very long time. And uh, I chopped these in the food processor. This is one and a half cups, roughly. And this is about seven ounces of sweetened flaked coconut. I'm sorry I'm hitting everything, but... You know... There was something else I wanted to say, and I, I totally forgot. I'm excited for, we didn't eat lunch, uh, <clears throat> the beans and the cabbage yet. We're saving them for supper time. I'm very excited. We're gonna, it's like, I'm, I'm six minutes in. I'm sorry, I had to switch. This is my favorite whisk. I'm sorry about the noise, but this one is the perfect size. If you don't have one like this, you really need to get one. I use it for everything. Anyway, I can see it's slightly starting to get thicker. And uh, if it, at, at the end, it might take a little bit longer, but uh, you could probably add like just a, like a teaspoon of flour and it would help it thicken a, a little faster. Uh, I'm just waiting. I'm being patient. I'm going to wait for my timer and see if it's going to be 12 minutes or longer. But anyway, I have a, just a tiny bit here just in case I could cheat a little bit. But anyway, just want to let you know it's going a little bit thicker and turning a little bit darker. I have about two minutes left. And it kind of started bubbling just a little bit. I left it on medium. At first I got really scared and turned it down, but then I said, no, just, you gotta be patient with this kind of frosting, but it, it's worth it. It really is. 
It's, I, I just wanted you to see the difference and how it's getting bigger. I think 12 minutes, 13 minutes is going to do it. It smells wonderful. This recipe, the smell just reminds me of my mom so much because she made the best German chocolate cake ever. Anyway, once this is done, we're going to take it off the heat and then add the vanilla and the coconut and the pecans. And then we're going to let it cool. The burner, it was almost on the burner, but I took it off. But this is just how you want it. And it's going to thicken as it cools. So let's add our vanilla. This is almost empty. Let's see how much we have. It says one and a half teaspoons. So we're going to just, that's about one. And that's about two. And that's about empty. The drop left, we're going to add the, the uh, chopped pecans and coconut. And just, I keep my coconut in the freezer as well, but I got it to room temperature. Um, I find it lasts a lot longer too when you do that. I keep a lot of things in the freezer. Uh, I had to, I'm trying to think of what I could tell y'all that I baked this year for Christmas. I made, oh, some snickerdoodles. That that dessert is so sweet, but it uses dulce, dulce de leche. It's so good. That was my favorite thing I had to make for Christmas. Um, I think that's about all. Oh, I made an apple cake for my dad. The, the one that I did in the video, he absolutely loved that. Look, this is just how you want it. I'm so uh, pleased because I'm just trying to have more patience and uh, just trying to do recipes that require patience, also teaches you patience. And the patience paid off because I didn't curdle the eggs. So I'm very happy. I'm gonna let this cool a little bit. And I can't wait to put it on the cake. The cake, it's still a little bit warm, but sometimes I cheat, and I'm gonna be honest with that, put it in the freezer. It's a little bit warm underneath, but it's cooling off pretty well. This is a lot of frosting. And uh, you know, the picture is nothing like, it, the cake doesn't show that it's this thick. So let's go ahead and put some frosting on here. And, and it's okay if it's a little bit warm. I don't know if I'm gonna put all of it. That's a lot, let me just dump it out. I mean, what else am I gonna do with it, really? All right, I don't wanna make a mess. Okay, let's see what we have. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Can, oh, sorry about that. I love this frosting. I think it's gonna go really well with this recipe. Especially since I used the German chocolate bore instead of the bigger sweet. You know, it's really like a German chocolate cake just with some red food coloring in it. Yeah. Let's see, Ella. I'm like, that's probably... That's full. That's a, that's a lot of frosting. I'm just gonna put the rest on top. And then I'm gonna let this cool a little bit more, but not too much. And then we'll do a taste test. Very nice. Here's the cake as it's cooled. We're gonna cut a piece. And it's, I put a lot of frosting on here, but I'm gonna be so excited. Uh, and then, they're not too good at here, let me try to, Ella's holding the camera, so. Mm. This is not the proper. Ooh, okay. And you know, the corner's probably not gonna be the best part. The corner is always the best part. Not really. Sometimes the corner is a little bit dry, but anyway, I'm going to cut another, a prettier piece. Yeah, look. Oh, look at that. It's still the, you really should clean off your spatula if you want a really clean cut. But I can tell, look, the cake's it's moist and tender. Taste not looks. Okay, let me see if I can fit That's this. What we say. We, we That's can't what eat the whole piece because we didn't even eat supper yet. Shh. But look at that. I want you to see. That's quite a fluffy cake. This is. Looks very yummy. Really? I've been craving this. Okay, go wash your hands. I'm going to have to go wash my hands. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, here is this wonderful cake. Oops. Uh. And, you know, if you like frosting, just go ahead and pile it all on. That's what we did. I know a lot of people, everybody talks about, you know, the new year, about healthy recipes and all that. Like, I'm making some healthy recipes. I don't video everything we make, but I don't have, I don't bake that often anymore. So, this is a treat. And it brought back a lot of memories of my mother. And this cake is perfection. <laughs> Not 
not to toot our own horn, but uh, it's pretty good. Oh my goodness. I almost thought I overbaked it, but I didn't. <laughs> I, I had to watch it very closely because I ended up turning my oven on convection for the last 30 minutes. And it, and I, I like to practice using convection because I really like it a lot. But it's, it's really, it's just, I just want you to get a close up. It's really moist and delicious and the frosting's just right. And I thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna list the ingredients for the cake in the description. And uh, you'll have to watch the video for the frosting, I guess. I think I threw away the, the paper. Anyway, I want to say thank you so much for giving me a good year for 2019. I hope to make more videos for 2020. I'm so excited to get well and get back on track. And uh, anyway, we just appreciate you guys so much. And uh, my channel's growing slowly, but it's growing and that's okay. So if you like my videos, share them and like it or subscribe if you have it. But there's one thing I know how to do is cook and bake. And I love it. And I love sharing recipes. So we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.